Welcome uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Nabil Ahmed Khan and I uh, welcome you uh, to this webinar. Uh, during the past uh, 18 or 16 months, uh, we have noticed that COVID ki wajah se jo hamari physical gatherings thi aur jo ek sikhne sikhane ka malta jo lecture program the jo CMEs the wo wo sare disturb ho gaye magar is pandemic se is disaster se bhi humne bahut kuch sikha aur maine personally ye sikha ke agar hamare paas aise blessed softwares nahi hote like zoom aur wo teams jahan pe hum abhi bhi baith ke physically तो इंटरेक्ट नहीं कर पाते मगर कम से कम इतना जरूर है कि एक दूसरे को देख लेते हैं और जो भी प्रेजेंटेशंस हैं और जो भी इस किस्म की गाइडलाइंस है वो आपस में एक दूसरे से शेयर करते हैं तो आई बिलीव दिस इज समथिंग दैट वाज नॉट अवेलेबल फॉर आस लास्ट टू डिकेड्स पहले मगर अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह नाउ वी हैव ऑल दिस तो आज का जो हमारा टॉपिक है वो है जनाब इमर्जिंग रोल ऑफ लेक्रोजोल इन सब फर्टिलिटी एंड वी हैव द ऑनर के प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर आयशा सिद्दीका हमें प्रेजेंटेशन इस पे देंगी इस पे बात करेंगी शी इज हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट गायनी यूनिट टू एट बोलान यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ मेडिकल एंड हेल्थ साइंसेस शी इज आल्सो द काउंसलर ऑफ एस पी एस पी एंड शी इज द चेयरपर्सन एसओ जी पी बलोचिस्तान चैप्टर बिफोर मूविंग टूवर्ड्स डॉक्टर आयशा प्रेजेंटेशन Uh, I would like to share with you a brief uh, profile of Excel Healthcare. आप सब Excel Healthcare से बखूबी बाकिफ हैं। अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह, this year in 2021, अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह, we have completed uh, 22 years of our operation in Pakistan, and uh, I'm sure uh, that you all will agree with me that uh, these 22 years have been excellence and benchmark for quality services reliability and trust jahan hum trust ki baat karte hain to that trust was uh, a very difficult thing to gain from doctors especially and we got that by introducing innovative and state of the art products in pakistan like cyclogis which is the only bio identical vaginal erectile progesterone available in pakistan और इससे आपकी प्रैक्टिस को बेतहाशा और आपके पेशेंट्स को बेतहाशा फायदा हुआ लिजरा एक्सेल इज अनदर आइडिया बिकॉज दैट प्रोडक्ट वैन इट वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन पाकिस्तान इट वॉज ओनली नोन फॉर इट्स एफिकेसी एंड इफेक्टिवनेस इन ब्रेस्ट कैंसर बट वी इंट्रोड्यूस दिस आइडिया दैट लेक्ट्राजोल लिजरा एक्सेल एरोज इनोवेटर्स कैन बी इफेक्टिवली यूज एज ओपोल्यूशन इंड्यूसर्स और अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह आप सब ने इस आइडिया को पैटर्नाइज किया और आज इट इज दी फर्स्ट लाइन ओवोल्यूशन इंड्यूसर इन पाकिस्तान लिजरा एक्सेल की क्योंकि मैडम भी बात लेक्रोजोल पे करने जा रही हैं तो मैं थोड़ा सा तो चाहूंगा कि ये आपको लेबरेट कर दूं कि हाउ फॉर्चुनेट वी आर दैट वी हैव अ प्रोडक्ट लाइक लिजरा एक्सेल इन पाकिस्तान देर हैव बीन सो मेनी ब्रांड्स इंट्रोड्यूस इन पाकिस्तान ऑफ लेक्रोजोल इन द पास फोर फाइव ईयर्स Uh, why lizra excel because uh, uh, it is the only product that has been approved by the mhra by uh, ema uh, which is the european medicine agency and recently it was also approved by tga which is the therapeutic good administration of australia ye sare privileges uh, lizra excel ko kyun mile This was only because of its bioequivalence to the brand. Not just ye case vaja se Lizra Excel ko Pakistan me, balke this is the reason why it is trusted globally. Or yehi vaja hai ki alhamdulillah we have got the experience of selling around 11 million units or doses of Lizra Excel in Pakistan, and that all we have done with safety and efficacy. Alhamdulillah. Nevertheless, the product is being manufactured at a dedicated facility. Because lactrazoles, for the guidelines international, it is the same that it is dedicated facility to be manufactured. And this is the reason why it is far more superior from all the other lactrazoles available in Pakistan. They are made at the general tablet sections, which is not recommended by any health authority abroad. So that. was all from uh, my side ab main request karunga dr aisha sidiqa sahiba se ke wo hame 
emerging role of letrozole in subfertility is pay apni expertise to share kare thank you very much thank you very much i'm very thankful to excel pharma the whole team and especially uh, mr javed here from balochistan for giving me the chance to it is in start आप इनको प्लीज मुझे वो करते हैं आप स्क्रीन शेयर करी आप स्क्रीन आप में मुझे आप प्लीज इसको स्क्रीन शेयर कर करो शेयर करवाएंगे लेके जाना है इसको तो थोड़ा सा आप इधर ले आए इनको हटा दें ले आए नहीं नहीं तो यहाँ से करें ऊपर करें ताकि मुझे फर्टिलिटी आजकल जो है सब फर्टिलिटी क्योंकि सब और उसमें भी से बिल्कुल घूम ही करे आप लोगों के अपना शेयर करें आप लोग अपना शेयर करें आपको समझ नहीं आ रही आप खुद शेयर करें हाँ खुद ही करें उट हम देखते हैं कि ओवलेटरी डिसफंक्शन और एन ओवलेशन फैक्टर हो सकता है लोकल फैक्टर हो सकते हैं 
this inhibitor in what are the what are the indications where we
अब इजाजत ठीक है अब मेरी आवाज आ रही है आप लोग को अच्छा तो वी वर टॉक आई होप कि अब सही हो गया है लेकिन टेक्नोलॉजी है ये तो होता रहता है इसके साथ तो आई होप कि अब आवाज आ रही है आप लोगों को तो वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट द यूज ऑफ लेट्राजोल फर्स्ट इट्स यूज वॉज आइडेंटिफाइड इन ब्रेस्ट कैंसर दोज ब्रेस्ट कैंसर विच हैव इस्ट्रोजिन रिसेप्टर्स then it's used in uh, sub fertility as an ovulation inducer and nowadays letrozole has been used for the treatment of endometriosis and male infertility slide aage kijiye aap aap slide aage kare हाँ आप आगे करें इसको अगली स्लाइड लाए आप प्लीज अगली स्लाइड ले आएंगे स्लाइड नहीं कर रही ये लोग आप अगली स्लाइड लाएंगे प्लीज इससे अगली स्लाइड प्लीज यस हाँ प्लीज आप इसको ना इसी तरह से करते जाए तो ओवलेटरी डिसफंक्शन जैसा कि आई टोल्ड यू दैट ओवलेटरी डिसफंक्शन इज अ टर्म विच डिस्क्राइब्स अ ग्रुप ऑफ डिसऑर्डर इन विच द ओवलेशन फेल्स टू अकर और इट अकर्स ऑन एन इनफ्रीक्वेंट और इरेगुलर बेसिस वाइल एन ओवलेशन विच मीन्स देर इज इट इट इज अ डिसऑर्डर इन विच द एग्स डू नॉट डेवेलप प्रॉपरली और दे आर नॉट रिलीज फ्रॉम द follicular follicles of the ovaries next slide please if you see the uh, some uh, research papers then it has been shown that letrozole nowadays is superior to clomiphene citrate as we all know that clomiphene citrate was the first agent which was used in infertility both in male and female infertility but the drawback of the uh, clomiphene citrate is that uh, clomiphene citrate is associated with multiple pregnancies ovulation um, uh, hyperstimulation uh, as the incidence of ovulation um, stimulation over stimulation is less as compared to fsh and lh which we give in the injectable form but still clomiphene citrate has got higher uh, incidence of ovulation stimulation syndrome as compared to letrozole now with the emerging role of letrozole in ovulation induction it has been pointed out that congenital malformation see pichli wali slide di please that congenital malformation are associated with the use of letrozole but the thing is that the half life of letrozole is not that much that it exists till the time of organogenesis its half life is not that much for the uh, in uh, for the uh induction of or for to cause congenital malformation by aromatase inhibitor or letrozole it's important that letrozole should be present at the time of organogenesis but as we all know that letrozole is given for ovulation induction it remains in the blood its half life is more than not more than 48 hours and it is then eliminated from the body so there is no question that letrozole for ovulation induction will be present at the time of organogenesis to cause 
congenital malformation in the newborn. So a study was conducted and it was proved by that study that congenital malformation uh, among 911 newborn conceived after infertility treatment with letrozole or clomiphene citrate. So you can see that with letrozole, the incidence was very low, 2.5%, while with clomiphene citrate, it was 4.8%. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So uh, then a question in the media arose that is it justified to use, to limit the use of letrozole? Then it was proved that for letrozole to cause teratogenic effect, it has to be present at the time of organogenesis. So as I explained that the half-life of letrozole is not that much that it will be present for so long to, go, to cause uh, congenital malformation. Next slide, please. Now, uh, I know that junior doctors are sitting over here. For them, I want to explain what is the role of aromatase inhibitor in infertility and for ovulation induction. Actually, what is aromatase? Aromatase is an enzyme which is present in our body, in adipose tissue, ovaries, brain, and in some endometriotic, ectopic endometriotic tissue. What does aromatase inhibitor do? How does it increase the chances of ovulation is that, as we know that to produce estrogen from the ovary, we need hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis. The hypothalamus releases GnRH, which acts on the pituitary and will release FSH and LH, which acts on the ovary and in turn, the follicles are going to produce the estrogen. And this estrogen, by a negative feedback, working on the hypothalamus, will reduce the production of FSH and LH. What does aromatase do? Aromatase inhibitor will reduce the aromatase enzyme. And this aromatase enzyme will reduce the production of estrogen and the negative feedback on the pituitary will be finished and FSH and LH. And the, the other role of aromatase inhibitor is that it stops the conversion of testosterone like androstenedione and testosterone into estrogen. So it will reduce the level of estradiol and estrion. So in turn, testosterone and androsterone, androstenedione will be present in high level. This use of, uh, this property of aromatase inhibitor is utilized in the endometriosis, which I will explain in the forthcoming slides. So what happens? that uh, now studies has been done. It's okay. Studies, next slide, please. Studies has shown that the ovulation rate with letrozole or lesra is 82% as compared to 67% with clomiphene citrate. And take home baby rate with letrozole or lesra is 39% as compared to clomiphene citrate. In my forthcoming slides, we can appreciate that the use of letrozole, its side effects as compared to clomiphene citrate are less as compared to um, the use of clomiphene citrate with uh, injection FSH and LH. So a study shows that letrozole versus clomiphene citrate 
for infertility in the polycystic ovarian syndrome is very useful. So letrozole is superior to clomiphene citrate for ovulation induction in polycystic ovaries. Aage kijiye. Next slide, please. So letrozole reduces the dose of HMG without undesirable effect, which is seen on clomiphene. As we know that HMG injection, the FSH combination, which is the combination of FSH and LH, they are expensive. They have side effects, ovarian hyperstimulation, multiple pregnancies. So studies have shown that the use of letrozole have make it possible to reduce the number of vials of HMG as compared to clomiphene citrate. Next slide, Kiji, please. Next slide. Another study shows that clomiphene citrate utilization in the Netherlands from 1998 to 2000 has been reduced. And I would like to request my audience that if the studies are supporting that letrozole for ovulation induction is safer than clomiphene citrate, it requires less use of HMG, FSH and LH. So it's better to bring letrozole in our use for ovulation induction, both in male infertility and female infertility. So the use of clomiphene citrate in past 10 years has been reduced and the role of letrozole is increasing day by day in recent years. Next, please. Next slide. So another study that Letrozole is emerging as first-line ovulation induction agent in subfertile women. This is a study uh, which has been done in Pakistan. Thank you very much. Our colleague, Professor Shahid Rao Saab and Uzma Shaheen, they have done this study in Pakistan. And the conclusion is that letrozole can, should be or may be considered as the safer, as safer and first line drug for ovulation induction with minimal side effect. Next slide, please. Next slide. The pregnancy rate as compared to clomiphene citrate, FSH, letrozole 2.5 milligram, combination of clomiphene citrate, FSH, letrozole and FSH, natural and total has been compared in this slide and we can see clearly that the take-home baby rate is more with letrozole plus FSH. And being the safer drug, we have to opt the option of giving letrozole to subfertile women. And where required, we can add FSH and FSH plus letrozole and FSH plus clomiphene citrate, the letrozole FSH regime is superior as compared to clomiphene citrate plus FSH. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next, please. And multiple pregnancy rate, if we see, although letrozole is also associated with uh, incidence of multiple pregnancy, but the chances of multiple pregnancy, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome is less in the group where letrozole was used as compared to clomiphene citrate and clomiphene citrate and FSH. Next, please. Next slide. So, if we see the spontaneous abortion rate per cycle and you see the bars that the rate of spontaneous abortion rate, although associated with all these and even in natural cycles, spontaneous abortions are there. We can, we can see that there could be uh, the causes of spontaneous abortion like 
diabetes, congenital malformation, and all these things. But keeping in mind that clomiphene citrate, FSH, letrozole, their combination, they can lead to spontaneous abortion because these are the weak pregnancies and the chances of spontaneous abortion rate are higher. But letrozole compared to clomiphene citrate, the, the risk is lower. Next slide, please. Next, please. Next slide, please. Now, endometriosis, as we all know, what now actually the purpose of today's presentation is to give awareness to my uh, junior doctors about the use of letrozole aromatase inhibitor in endometriosis. As we all know, endometriosis means presence of endometrium outside the endometrial cavity. If it is present in the myometrium, it is adenomyosis, but most of the time endometriotic tissues are present outside the uterus, mainly pouch of Douglas, ovaries, tubes, rarely on the umbilicus, abdominal wall, and the nasal mucosa. I remember a case when one, one of my patients came, she said, Dr. Saab, periods ke dauran meri naaf se bleeding hoti hai. So, endometriotics foci can be found outside the, uh, the pelvic cavity. But the most common site is pelvic peritoneum, pouch of Douglas, ovaries, tubes. It's the most common cause of secondary dysmenorrhea, the commonest cause of uh, infertility. And it affects about 20 to 40% of infertile women. As I told that, it's characterized by presence of endometrium-like tissue in the ectopic sites. It affects nearly one in seven women of reproductive age, mainly uh, those girls who postpone their marriage because of career or their education. The chances of endometriosis are more in those girls. It's the third most common gynecological disorder which requires hospitalization and can lead to hysterectomy. The management of endometriosis is surgery and medication. Laparoscopy is the gold standard for the diagnosis of endometriosis. But those areas where, next slide please, where the laparoscope is not available, my advice to my young doctors, if you come across, a woman with childbearing age, and she has secondary dysmenorrhea, which is not responding to painkillers, antibiotics, then we have to consider endometriosis. But of course, the diagnosis is confirmed by the presence of endometriotic foci outside the, uh, and, uh, the uterus or in adenomyosis in the myometrium. The, this slide shows the commonest site, as I told. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. This is endometriosis on the bowel surface. Adhesions, dyspinoria, dyspinoria, dyspironia, painful defecation. And this is a rare case of endometriosis on the appendix. Next slide, please. I told that, this I have discussed that, what does it cause? Next slide, please. Next slide. The American revised AFS system is most commonly used, American Fertility Society system. And it ranges from stage one to stage four, minimum, mild, moderate, and severe. The staging involves location and depth of the disease and extent of adhesions. If, you give, if I give uh, a, a broad concept 
about the staging then to to recall your knowledge in case of stage 1 there are next slide please there are next slide ki ji please minimum foci are present and the adhesions are not very deep if you see the peritoneum superficial size 1 to 3 cm on the ovary superficial and the size is less than 1 cm the adhesions are not very much thick so if we see the stage 2 which we called mild here again on the peritoneum on the ovary the size is more than 3 cm on the ovary less than 1 cm and firm adhesions and if you see on the ovary it's less than 1 cm and if we score it's the scoring system you have to score all these things of course you can stage the disease by laparoscopy or where the laparoscopic facilities are not available by open laparotomy so this is the different scoring uh, system as the score uh, goes higher and higher the problem gets severe the adhesions are dense dyspronia infertility and one stage will come that there will be frozen pelvis and the women will be infertile tubes block painful defecation painful urination pain during coitus and all thing all these things will occur so is better to treat it in the initial stages how can we treat by, by taking a proper history and we should not linger on that this is pid we go uh, we go on adding different type of antibiotics painkiller tramadol potent um, this uh, spasphone and all these things and when the stage goes into the severe adhesions the tubes become totally blocked and frozen section then even we cannot cure the poor women by the surgery so it is better to keep this thing in mind that if a woman has severe dysmenorrhea pelvic pain which is not responding to the antibiotic pain killer and it, the pain remains even after the stop stoppage of menstruation then there is a clear cut indication to perform diagnostic laparoscopy or we have to do the laparotomy if laparoscopy is not available it's the gold standard for diagnosis next slide please if you talk about the medical uh, management in endometriosis as i told that chronic pain because we are um, uh, running short of time i have already explained this uh, the chronic pelvic pain dysmenorrhea and dyspareunia all these things if you talk about the medical treatment as i told that we have got a variety of next slide please we have got variety of management options for the treatment of endometriosis if you talk about the medical treatment we are using painkillers and uh, non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs we are no, using progestogens we are using contraceptive pills the use of denazole gnrh analog and variety of combination of gnrh analog plus denazole gnrh analog plus progestogens gnrh analog versus oral contraceptive pills so there are thousands of studies but trials have been carried out and the result has been shown in the form of pain relief the result of these treatment in getting successful pregnancies and then the result with the spontaneous abortion and all these things you can find so many drugs studies 
and there are so many studies which are contradicting each other nowadays we are very um, fortunate that the use of aromatase inhibitor in endometriosis is emerging i pray to almighty allah that this should prove a remedy for those poor women who have got devastating pain who has crippled the life of women with endometriosis we should understand what is the role of aromatase inhibitor in endometriosis how can endometriosis be cured by letrozole lesra or the different aromatase analogs we have got three generation of aromatase inhibitor first generation second generation and third generation we have the first and second generation of aromatase inhibitors are used parenterally while the third generation where we have different type steroidal type non steroidal type letrozole anestrozole and other types which i will discuss with you they the third generation is given orally for example if we talk about the letrozole it comes by axel pharma lesra 2.5 mg 5 mg 7.5 mg while anestrozole come in the dose of 1 mg so what is the role of aromatase inhibitor in endometriosis this is the main point i will focus and i will try to give a concept about the role of aromatase inhibitor in endometriosis so the basic concept is that aromatase as i told is an enzyme which is present in our body it is present in the perimenopausal women and post menopausal women in the perimenopausal women it's present in the ovary adipose tissue and brain and liver while in the menopausal women as the ovaries get atrophy the main part is present in the adipose tissue as we know that it it mediates the conversion of aromatase enzyme converts the androstenedion and testosterone to estrone and estradiol remember that aromatase is not present or it's present in a very little amount in normal endometrium but more moderate amount of aromatase is present in the endometriotic foci this is the key to understand that aromatase is not present or it's present in a very very low concentration in normal endometrium as compared to the endometriotic foci so here the aromatase inhibitor in the endometriotic foci is going to stop the conversion of androstenedion and testosterone to estradiol and estrone once you get a little amount of estrone and estradiol the process of phagocytosis inflammation are reduced in the endometriotic foci the inflammatory mediators the which i will discuss with you in the following slides they are stopped and when the inflammatory process the mediators the chemotactic factors the stereogenic factors when they are stopped then in the endometriotic foci the inflammation adhesion formation they are stopped so aromatase enzyme has been demonstrated locally in the endometriotic implants and a molecular etiology of endometriosis has been proposed next slide please next slide 
So here you can see that the aromatase enzyme is going to stop in the second row. As I told that it's pre it is P450, it is an enzyme, right? Present in the mitochondria. Its main action, the aromatase main action is to convert androstenedione into estrogen. Estradiol and estron. Androstenedione is converted by aromatase into estron, while testosterone is converted into estradiol. Please keep this point in your mind. That is why aromatase inhibitor is used in male infertility. Once the aromatase activity is stopped here, no more testosterone will be converted into estradiol and no more androstenedione will be converted into estron. So the ratio of testosterone to estradiol and ratio of androstenedione to estron will be high when we give letrozole or aromatase inhibitor. You have stopped the action of aromatase enzyme. You have stopped the conversion of testosterone into estradiol. So the ratio of testosterone to estradiol will raise. More testosterone will be present and the chances of the function of spermatogenesis and the fertility in male will be improved once the testosterone estradiol ratio is improved by stopping the action of aromatase on this point. Let's focus on role of aromatase inhibitor and endometriosis. Next slide, please. Here you can see the normal endometrium have got no aromatase. These are the mediators of inflammation. This is COUPTFWT COX2. And here you can say in the endometriosis, the aromatase and COX2 has moderate amount. In the normal endometrium, you will see there is no aromatase activity, cyclooxygenase, and here these are all mediators of the, uh, for, uh, which are present in the endometri in, in our body. I will, um, I just forgot, I will tell uh, what does it stand for. It is important for our postgraduates to know what does it stand for. These are actually present in the, the COX. The COX TF2 is robustly expressed in the endometrial stroma of healthy women. And its expression is reduced in the ectopic lesion of the women with endometriosis. What does COUPTF stand? It's the chicken over albumin upstream promoter and transcription factor, TF mean transcription factor. These are present and these are required. These are present in the uh, germ cells and they are required for uh, the sperm genesis, ovum genesis in the, in the process in, in very beginning, in very beginning. So COPTF means chicken over albumin upstream promoter Trans TF mean transducer factor, right? So if you see the endometriotic tissue, here the activity of aromatase and COX2 uh, cyclooxygenase inhibitor is very, very high. Here the endometriotic tissue is going to produce high amount of estradiol and prostaglandin E2. And this estradiol and prostaglandin E2, these are 
promoter of the inflammation and very high level of, uh, is seen in the endometriotic tissue and these are responsible for the severe inflammatory process in endometriosis. So if we stop the aromatase activity, we will stop the production of estradiol and prostaglandins and all the mediator of inflammation and we will be able to reduce the inflammation, adhesion formation, the pain, the swelling. So the, as there, is, there will be no fibrosis, no adhesion, no blockage of the tube, no adhesion on the rectum and the uterus, no um, dense adhesion formation ETC. Aage ki jiye. Next slide, please. Next slide. Here you can see that endometrium in the disease, in the disease free. The, from the precursors, low prostaglandins are released. Because there is no aromatase. When there is no aromatase, there will be no production of estrogen. And estrogen itself is a promoter of prostaglandin production. And once prostaglandins are produced, inflammation, all five things, rober, paler, dolor, and all these things, the cascade of inflammatory process will start, which will lead to pain and all these things. So you can appreciate in this slide that endometrium in a normal woman has no aromatase. Therefore, there are less prostaglandin E2, less estrogen. Estradiol and estron. Estron is there. Estradiol is converted by HSD17. These are uh, enzymes which convert estradiol into estron. Estron is a weak estrogen, while estradiol is a potent estrogen. If you see and compare the endometrium of a disease-free and a woman with endometriosis, you will see the precursor by COX-2, cyclooxygenase enzyme, is converted into moderate prostaglandin E2. Once there is prostaglandin E2, prostaglandins, inflammation, pain, and all these things. There is aromatase which will convert the precursor into estrogen. Estrogen will then produce, will induce prostaglandin E2 and low estradiol locally. While estradiol will be converted into estron. But if you see the ectopic endometriotic tissue, here everything is on its peak. COX-2 level high and there is high level of prostaglandin E2. Aromatase is there in a very high amount. And here is the point. We want to reduce the aromatase inhibitor in the ectopic endometrial tissue. Because the enemy is this ectopic endometriotic tissue where there is high COX-2, there is high aromatase. So these the aromatase inhibitor will stop the precursor to be converted into high estrogen. Once the level of the estradiol is reduced, the process of inflammation will calm down and there is no HSD17B2 to convert the, the uh, potent estrogen into uh, the weaker estrogen. Our enemy is aromatase and COX-2. Here we have to give non-steroidal anti-inflammatory plus aromatase inhibitor, which will stop the action of aromatase, which will stop in turn the precursor to be converted into high estrogen. Agi kijiye, please. Next slide. Here again, arachidonic acid is uh, will be fair, will uh, the, the COX-2 the cyclooxygenase enzyme, the same which I explained that arachidonic acid by COX-2 is converted into prostaglandin E2. In, these are all the mediators. And PGE2 is then converted into aromatase. 
in adrenal and ovary the aromatase will convert this precursor into e2 and e1 interleukins and all the inflammatory mediators they will be on its peak but once we stop the action of the aromatase inhibitor of the cox2 all the activity will will come down and in the endometriotic foci they will regress itself next slide please so the need is complete estrogen inhibition from all sides from all sides mean which are these all sides estrogen is produced all side next slide please it's present in the pituitary pituitary hypothalamic cycle ovary endometriotic foci and peripheral conversion the beauty of aromatase is that aromatase inhibitor will act everywhere if we give estrogen your clomiphene citrate it will act and will reduce production of estrogen only from hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis but my dear look at this slide try to take the concept that aromatase inhibitor is is the factor which will stop the production of aromatase which is present which is acting everywhere in the pituitary in the um, ovary in the endometriotic foci and in the peripheral tissue peripheral tissue remember that in the perimenopausal and postmenopausal women the the estrogen estron and estriol is mainly coming by peripheral conversion and aromatase inhibitor is the is the agent will stop aromatase in the peripheral tissue in the endometriotic tissue in the ovary in the adrenal will stop once its action is stopped low production of estradiol potent estrogen low product of inflammatory mediators low incidence of adhesions and all these things next please the heading so this clinical trial has been carried out you can see that and the result has been seen in the form of pain relief reduced lesion size so different agents has been and different researcher have done the study by using aromatase letrozole letrozole plus norethisterone acetate the progesterone aromatase plus gnrh analog letrozole plus progestogens aromatase plus oral contraceptive pills this is the length of time and you can see the outcome you can take a pic of this and we can compare that these studies shows the use of different agents the aromatase inhibitors in endometriosis aage kiji this is pre treatment and for lesion size and staging and aage kiji isko laparoscopy se fir isko compare kiya hai and it has been shown aage karein isko aage karein iske aage aage isko pain score इससे ऊपर करें इससे पहले वाले पेन स्कोर बिफोर एंड आफ्टर आफ्टर ट्रीटमेंट इन टू रीसेंट स्टडीज ये हुई है रिजीम क्या थी लेट्राजोल प्लस ये प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन नॉर एथिस्टिरोन नॉर एथिस्टिरोन एसिटेट प्लस ये क्या है आपका एनेस्ट्रोजोल प्लस ओरल कंट्रासेप्टिव पिल्स फिर दूसरी रिजीम में लेट्राजोल प्लस ये ये प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन इनोरिटिस्ट्रॉन एसिटेट प्लस एनेस्ट्राजोल प्लस ओरल कंट्रासेप्टिव पिल तो यू कैन सी दैट 
बेस लाइन में आप देखें और ये टाइम देखें आप सो द रिजीम सेज दैट द यूज ऑफ लेट्राजोल इज सुपीरियर एज इन कॉम्बिनेशन आपने इसको कॉम्बिनेशन में देना है बिकॉज इस प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन हम देते चले आ रहे हैं ओरल कंट्रासेप्टिव पिल्स हम देते चले आ रहे हैं इट हैज बीन शोन दैट द पेन रिलीफ वेन इट वॉज कोर्ट वॉज बेटर द पेन रिलीफ वॉज बेटर इन दो ग्रुप वेयर एरोमेटेज इन बेटर स्पेशली द लेट्राजोल वॉज यूज विद द प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन एज कंपेयर टू द अदर रिजीम्स आगे कीजिए ये भी फिर गुजरलीन प्लस एनेस्ट्रोजोल यूज हुआ है और गुजरलीन जो के आपका जी एन आर एच एनोलॉग है इट हैज बीन सीन दैट द यूज ऑफ एनेस्ट्रोजोल प्लस गुजरलीन द पेन रिलीफ वॉज मोर एज कंपेयर टू दो वेयर द गुजरलीन वॉज यूज एलोन आगे स्लाइड्स में बताएंगे कि किस किस डोज में आपने इसको देना है गुजरलीन जो है वो आपका जी एन आर एच है जो कि हम 3.6 पॉइंट सिक्स मिलीग्राम में यूज होता है और एनेस्ट्राजोल वन मिलीग्राम में आपने डेली देना है और फॉर सिक्स मंथ्स इट इट विल कम सो द लेट्राजोल एडमिनिस्टर्ड ये जितनी स्लाइड्स बताई हैं उनका रिजल्ट अब मैं आपके साथ शेयर कर रही हूँ लेट्राजोल एडमिनिस्टर्ड इन कॉम्बिनेशन विद एन ओवेरियन सप्रेशन Uh, represent promising and novel treatment patient with endometriosis who do not respond to existent treatment appear to obtain significant pain relief from letrazole most of the letrazole regime are fairly simple one tablet daily agar enestrazole use karna hai to 1 mg hai letrazole 2.5 mg aur side effect bhi kam hai as compared to other combinations some of these regimes may potentially be administered over prolonged period of time aage kijiye aromatase inhibitor in the treatment of severe and ye study hui hai and the result of the study is that letrozole is superior to other aromatase inhibitor in relieving the pain which is associated any other jo maine aapko bataya ki teen generation hai first second and third first and second generation jo hai wo uh, parenteral hai third generation jo hai wo um, aap oral dete hain usme bhi anestrazol hai letrazol so this study shows that letrazol is superior to other aromatase inhibitor in pain relief aage kijiye effect of letrozole compared with danazole on patient with confirmed endo ye randomized control trial hua hai conclusion yahi hai ki letrozole is more effective than danazole for reducing the pain dyspnea dysmenorrhea in those patient who have recurrent endometriosis to result kya hua danazole gnrh ocp un regime mein where the uh, letrozole was used the pain relief in recurrent endometriosis was superior in those group where letrozole was used next slide please next another study which was done it also shows that letrozole should be a ye result nikla for the candidate uh, who are for my of course endometriosis mein aapne dekhna hai you have to judge who is for medical therapy who is for surgical therapy if you chose for medical therapy then in those patients letrozole is the best choice as compared to other avail available uh, regimes next please next please another study european journal of ops and gynae se ye reference liya gaya hai again it shows that aromatase inhibitor is beneficial in perimenopausal women with chronic pain which is 
सेकेंडरी टू रिफ्रेक्टरी एंडोमेट्रियोसिस विदाउट कंप्रोमाइजिंग द फर्टिल ये भी एक अच्छी बात है कि जब हम जी एन आर एच एन लॉक देते हैं उसमें हम फिर फर्टिलिटी को आप थोड़ा सा डिले करते हैं वी गिव ओरल कंट्रासेप्टिव पिल वी हैव टू वेट हेयर द ब्यूटी इज दैट द एरोमेटेज इन ए बेटर आप वहां पर भी यूज कर सकते हो वेर आप फर्टिलिटी इज द मेन एम तो पेन भी आपका उससे हो जाएगा और आपको वेट भी नहीं करना पड़ेगा नेक्स्ट स्लाइड प्लीज अब इसका रोल है मेन इनफर्टिलिटी में जो कि इसका इमर्जिंग रोल आ गया है एज आई टोल्ड दैट एरोमिटेज इनहिबिटर विल इंक्रीज द रेशियो ऑफ टेस्टोस्टिरोन टू ईस्टाडायल कैसे आगे कीजिए इफ यू सी ये थोड़ा सा आप लोगों को बताएं जूनियर डॉक्टर बैठे हुए हैं रिलेटिव प्रिवेलेंस ऑफ जियोलॉजीज ऑफ इनफर्टिलिटी मेल फैक्टर ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी परसेंट है बोथ मेल एंड फीमेल आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर टेन टू फोर्टी परसेंट फीमेल फैक्टर ज्यादा है फोर्टी टू फिफ्टी फाइव अनएक्सप्लेन इनफर्टिलिटी टेन टू ट्वेंटी है तो हमने मेल फैक्टर की बात करनी है बहुत बड़ा परसेंटेज है ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी थैंक यू लेट्राजोल के आप आए हैं एरोमेटेज इन दिटर थैंक यू एक्सल फार्मा फॉर गिविंग अस द चांस कि हम ये डिस्कस करें कि किस तरह से आप हमें लॉजिक्स दे रहे हैं कि हम इसको मेल इनफर्टिलिटी में यूज करें मेन पॉइंट यही है अच्छा अगर आप कॉजेज ऑफ मेल इनफर्टिलिटी देखें इम्यून सिस्टम फैक्टर फाइव परसेंट हाइपोगोनेटिज्म टेन परसेंट वेरिकोसिल सेवनटीन सिस्टेमिक डिसऑर्डर थ्री सेक्शुअल डिसऑर्डर सिक्स यूरोजेनाइटल इन्फेक्शन नाइन अनडिसेंडेड टेस्टिस एट परसेंट एंड अनएक्सप्लेन थर्टी फोर परसेंट नेक्स्ट प्लीज अब एजोस्पर्मिया टू टाइप्स ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव एंड नॉन ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव ओलिगोस्पर्मिया ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव में क्या है ब्लॉक हो गया है उसको आप यूरोलॉजिस्ट के पास भेजो अगर एजोस्पर्मिया आया है ऐसे नहीं कि आपने कह दिया नहीं बस आपके बच्चे हो ही नहीं सकते आपने सिरम एफ एस ए चैलेंज करवाई और आप देखें वेदर इट इज हाइपर गोनेट्रॉफिक हाइपोगोनेटिज्म और हाइपोगोनेट्रॉफिक हाइपो मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम सब कुछ सही होता है बट देयर इज सम ब्लॉकेज ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन है तो यूरोलॉजिस्ट उसको देख लेगा With your knowledge, with level of FSH, अगर एफ एस एच एन एल एच के लेवल बहुत ज्यादा है तो इसका मतलब क्या है कि हाइपर गोनेट्रॉफिक हाइपर गोनेटिज्म है वी आर हेल्पलेस ओवर हेयर लेकिन अगर एफ एस एल एल एच नॉर्मल आ रही है और एजोस्परमिया आ रहा है देन देर इज अ पॉइंट और अगर टेस्टोस्टिरोन का लेवल आप देखते हैं एफ एस एच देखते हैं एल एच देखते हैं टेस्टोस्टिरोन आपका थाइरॉइड प्रोफाइल आपका प्रोलेक्टिन टेस्ट ये सारी चीजें देख के अगर आप देखते हो कि एफ एस एच एल एच भी बहुत ज्यादा है टेस्टोस्टिरोन भी कम है स्पम्स भी नहीं है तो इसका मतलब ये यहाँ पे ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन का तो सवाल ही नहीं पैदा होता लेकिन अगर एफ एस एच एल एच उसके नॉर्मल लेवल में है टेस्टोस्टिरोन कम है तो आप उसको भेजें यूरोलॉजिस्ट के पास टू रूल आउट द ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव टाइप ऑफ एजोस्पर्मिया एंड तो नॉन ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव टाइम में मेनली कॉजेस क्या है प्राइमरीली इट इज द टेस्टिकुलर फेलियर एंडोक्राइनोपैथीज दैट सपोर्ट्स द स्पर्मेटोजेनेसिस एंडोक्राइन एंड जेनेटिक एवेल्युएशन आपने करनी है उसकी अगर सवेर ओलिगोस्पर्मिया जैसा कि मैंने बताया थायराइड का बहुत ज्यादा हमारे जो थारॉक्सिन आपके हाइपोथेलमस पिच्यूट्री टी एस एच फ्री टी थ्री फ्री टी फोर ये सारे आपको फिर करने होते हैं टोटल स्पम काउंट इज द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ ये एक चीज से नहीं है ये सब मिल के स्पम काउंट हमें देते हैं स्पम की मोटेलिटी स्पम की हेल्थ प्रोग्रेसिव मूवमेंट हेड और टेल कैसा है समटाइम्स काउंट बिल्कुल सही होता है प्रोग्रेसिव मूवमेंट नहीं हो रही होती है ना तो अगर उसको प्रॉपर फर्टिलिटी करनी है तो प्रोग्रेसिव मूवमेंट आपने देखनी है अब तो कितनी एडवांसमेंट आ गई है आगे कीजिए नेक्स्ट स्लाइड प्लीज और 
कुछ लोग कहते हैं एब्सटिनेंस फॉर टू टू थ्री डेज बट नॉट लेस देन टू डेज एंड नॉट मोर देन सेवन डेज मेरे कुछ दोस्त तो ये कहते हैं कि फिजियोलॉजिकल फिनमिना रहने दें कोई बात नहीं एब्सटिनेंस ना हो लेकिन बेहतर है कि टू टू थ्री डेज का एब्सटिनेंस हो बट नॉट मोर देन सेवन डेज एब नॉर्मल स्पम काउंट एनालिसिस एटलीस्ट आफ्टर फोर वीक्स फोर वीक्स के बाद आपने एक दफा दोबारा देख लें सेकेंड उसका आप उसका वो देख लें एक उस पर आप उसे आ, वो ना करें आप फैसला ना दें नेक्स्ट स्लाइड प्लीज ये आपने किस तरह से सीमन एनालिसिस शॉर्ट इंटरवल ऑफ ट्रेंस बता दिया है उसका फायदा क्या है डिक्रीजेज द स्पम डेंसिटी एंड सीमन वॉल्यूम लॉन्गर एब्सटिनेंस क्यों हम कहते हैं कि ना हो बिकॉज इट विल इंक्रीज द प्रोपोर्शन ऑफ डेड इमोटाइल एंड मोर्फोलॉजिकली एब नॉर्मल स्पम्स सीमन स्पेसिमन शुड बी कलेक्टेड इन अ क्लीन कंटेनर सीमन कैन ऑल्सो बी कलेक्टेड इन अलास्टिक कंडोम में भी ला सकते हैं लेकिन टाइम पीरियड देखें कि एक घंटे के अंदर अंदर इसकी एनालिसिस होनी चाहिए आगे कीजिए आगे करें वी आर रनिंग शॉर्ट ऑफ टाइम पैरामीटर्स 92 के गाइडलाइंस 210 के गाइडलाइंस अभी आप देखें कि सीमन वॉल्यूम 2 एम और अब 1.5 हो गया स्पम कंसेंट्रेशन 20 मिलियन अब 15 मिलियन को भी नॉर्मल पे और स्पम मोर्टेलिटी आप देखें 50 परसेंट प्रोग्रेसिव और मोर देन 25 परसेंट रेपिडली प्रोग्रेसिव होने चाहिए और अब कह रहे हैं छोटा कम कर दिया के 32 पे भी काम चल जाएगा मोर्फोलॉजी देखें <coughs> सॉरी कि नॉर्मल फॉर्म कितने हैं फिफ्टीन पर मोर देन फिफ्टीन परसेंट कहते थे अब कह रहे हैं चलिए फोर परसेंट पे भी वो हो जाएगा वाइट ब्लड काउंट कम होने चाहिए इन्फेक्शन कम होना चाहिए वो वहीं पे खड़ा है वन मिलियन पर एम ठीक है तो इम्यूनो बीट और मिक्स्ड एंटी ग्लोब्यूलिन रिएक्शन टेस्ट लेस देन टेन परसेंट कोटेड विद एंटीबॉडीज लेकिन अब कह रहे हैं कि लेस देन फिफ्टी परसेंट होनी चाहिए तो ये पैरामीटर्स जो मेरी यंग स्टूडेंट्स हैं उनके लिए थोड़ा सा इनको आप रिकॉल कर लें ये डिफरेंट पैरामीटर्स हैं नॉर्मल क्या है लोअर लिमिट ऑफ नॉर्मल क्या है ये आप देखें ये मेरे ख्याल में आप सब इसको करते हैं वी आर रनिंग शॉर्ट ऑफ टाइम इसको थोड़ा आगे आप ले जाएं ये सबको पता होगा थोड़ा आगे करें ताकि हम अपने मेन उस पर रहें इवेलुएशन वही मैं आपको बता चुकी हूँ एफ एस एच एल एच टेस्टोस्टिर हाइपोगोनाट्रॉफिक हाइपोगोनेडिज्म इसमें एफ एस एच एल एच टेस्टोस्टिर लो होगा एब नॉर्मल स्पर्मेटोजेनेसिस एफ एस एच नॉर्मल होगा या इंक्रीज होगा एल एच टेस्टोस्टिर नॉर्मल लेवल पे भी हो सकते हैं टेस्टिकुलर फेलियर में जो है हाइपरगोनोट्रॉफिक हाइपोगोनोडिज्म में एफ एस एच हाई होगा एल एच आई होगा और टेस्टोस्टिर कम होगा इसमें जो है ना वो आप चांसेस जरा कम होंगे हाइपरगोनोट्रॉफिक हाइपोगोनोडिज्म में सक्सेस के आगे कीजिए नेक्स्ट स्लाइड प्लीज वट ट्रीटमेंट ऑप्शन वी है ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ हाइपोगोनोट्रॉफिक हाइपोगोनेडिज्म पल्सिटाइल जी एन आर एच एच सी जी एच एम जी टेस्टोस्टिर ये हम देखते थे अब लेट्राजोल का रोल आया है और बहुत प्रोमिसिंग रोल है इसका जबकि हाइपरगोनोट्रॉफिक हाइपोगोनेडिज्म में आई वी एफ इक्सी डोनर्स पम्प जहर हमारे यहाँ नहीं होता प्रोफेसर शाहीन जफर एडॉप्शन पे बड़ा अच्छा आपका मुझे याद है मैडम तो एंड्रोजिन देना एफ एस एच क्लोमिफिन और उसके लिए है स्ट्रिक्ट कंट्रोल ऑफ डायबिटीज मलाइटस हाइपोथराइडिज्म लाइफ स्टाइल चेंज करें वजन कम करें स्ट्रेस को कम करें एक्सरसाइज करें ये सारी चीजें ये सारी चीजें बहुत रोल प्ले कर रही हैं हमारा जो मेन टॉपिक है जाहिर मेल इनफर्टिलिटी पे अगर मैं बोलना शुरू करूं तो मेरे ख्याल में इसमें तो पूरा हफ्ता हमें चाहिए हमारा मेन टॉपिक यूज ऑफ लेट्राजोल इन द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ मेल इनफर्टिलिटी 
नेक्स्ट कीजिए नेक्स्ट स्लाइड प्लीज वाई एरोमिटेज इनिबिटर मैं पहले भी बता चुकी हूं एरोमिटेज क्या करता है बिकॉज इट विल बैलेंस द रेशियो ऑफ टेस्टोस्टिर एंड इस्ट्राडोल हमने वी हैव टू स्टॉप द कन्वर्जन ऑफ टेस्टोस्टिर इन टू ईस्ट्राडोल एंड एरोमिटेज इज द एनजाइम विच कन्वर्ट टेस्टोस्टिर इन टू ईस्ट्राडोल एंड कन्वर्ट एंड्रोस्टिन डिओन इन टू ईस्ट्रॉन वंस you stop the action of aromatase by giving aromatase inhibitor which works at all the four areas peripherally adipose tissue adrenal cortex brain liver you stop the aromatase enzyme action you will stop the conversion of testosterone into estradiol and androstenedione into estrogen so the ratio of testosterone to estradiol aapne badha diya and it has been seen that those male who have high level of ratio of testosterone to estradiol un me performance to perform for pregnancy conception has been increased so stop the action of aromatase by giving aromatase inhibitor aapne diabetes ko bhi treat karna hai stress ko bhi relieve karna hai agar obstruction hai usko bhi khatam karna hai aisa nahi hai to obstructive factor maujood hai par aap kahe ki nahi madam aisha to keh rahi thi aap ye de de aap dekhe jahan iski zarurat hai non obstructive type mein non diabetic वहां पे इसका रोल है बाय इनिबिटिंग द कन्वर्जन ऑफ टेस्टोस्टिर इनटू इस्ट्रोजन एंड प्रोवाइडिंग मैक्सिमम लेवल ऑफ टेस्टोस्टिर फॉर स्पर्मेटोजेनेसिस दिस इज द रोल ऑफ एन एरोमेटेज इनिबिटर नेक्स्ट स्लाइड प्लीज नेक्स्ट स्लाइड प्लीज ये स्टडीज हुई है एंड दी स्टडीज व्हिच हैज बीन ये है कि इफेक्ट ऑफ लेट्राजोल ऑन स्पम पैरामीटर्स chromatin status and ros level in idiopathic oligosthenio teratozoospermia conclusion kya hai aromatase inhibitor can effectively increase the spontaneous pregnancy by improving the sperm parameters and sperm chromatin integrity in men with idiopathic i o a t and thyroxine uh, sorry testosterone in e2 ratio to becoming 10 hai 10 se isko aap upar karenge to hi iska role to promote the pregnancy zyada hoga next aage kare next next slide please again another study which shows that all patients showed spermatozoa in their ejaculate increased gonadotrophin and testosterone level and lower e2 level is study ka p level 0.05 any achhi study thi specificity and sensitivity p level agar aap dekhe to is research ki validity jo hai wo acceptable hai tab when letrazole was administered this suggests that letrazole treatment might improve the sperm count in a non in a nova sub population aage kijiye yes thank you very much i hope ke humne topic ko jo hamara main topic tha use of letrazole in infertility in endometriosis topic dekhe agar endometriosis pe main bolna shuru karungi to hafte lag jayenge मेल इनफर्टिलिटी बहुत सारे पॉइंट ऐसे थे जिसमें हमने ज्यादा डिस्कशन नहीं की हमारा मेन टॉपिक लेट्राजोल का रोल इन एंडोमेट्रियोसिस ओवलेशन इंडक्शन एंड मेल इनफर्टिलिटी में था एनी क्वेश्चन रिगार्डिंग दीज पॉइंट तो आई एम हेयर वेल आई थिंक जितनी बात की डॉक्टर साहबा ने वो वो बहुत ही सेल्फ एक्सप्लेनेटरी थी और बिल्कुल ग्रास फ्रूट लेवल पे जाके 
मैडम ने बताने की कोशिश की है कि ये सारी चीजें किस तरीके से हो सकती हैं मेरे ख्याल से अगर कोई सवाल नहीं है तो फिर हम इसका कंक्लूड करें प्रोफेसर आयशा सिद्दीक का मैडम इफ यू कैन हेयर मी यू प्लीज एडवाइज मी अगर कोई सवाल नहीं है तो शुड वी कंक्लूड दिस सेशन All right. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much, uh, everyone who have joined us here, and special thanks to Professor Aisha Siddiqui, who has taken a very long time to get us all the recent guidelines that we have been aware of. Any more questions? All right. Well, uh, thank you very much, and inshallah, Taala, we will be arranging uh, these type of sessions in, in months to come. and we hope that uh, you all will join us then too bahut shukriya assalam alaikum